Alright guys, Todd Crowe back again today. Hope you're enjoying your day so far and today we're going to talk about this little bit of drama really between Waskin and Nameless that went down over the last couple of days. Waskin and Scraps, free agents right now in the Call of Duty scene. Of course, one, two of the greatest players on the London Royal Ravens last season that came top four champs. Doesn't look like they're going back to that squad. Doesn't look like right now they're really going to find a home at all. Especially Waskin, it's pretty difficult being a main assault rifle. What team can you slot into? Which teams even want to bring you on as a substitute? Because if you're a substitute and you're a main assault rifle, you can only realistically replace one player on the team. You really want a very flexible player as your substitute who could potentially fill in a number of different roles. Scraps definitely has more opportunity, I believe. I think a lot of teams would benefit from a great slaying, you know, flex player like Scraps, but doesn't seem to be the case. And Waskin seems to think it's due to rumours behind the scenes on how much they're willing to practice, skipping scrims for Warzone, all this kind of stuff. And Nameless talked about it could also potentially be that they're asking for a lot of money in terms of their contracts. Waskin then denies that. There's a bit of back and forth and we want to talk about exactly why these guys aren't getting on a team for next year as it seems right now because that's a big question mark right everyone really wants to know these guys certainly top 48 players in the game why aren't they on a top 12 team in the league now it's gone to 44 big questions like if you guys enjoyed the video subscribe if you and you as always i'd greatly appreciate it let's just set the scene real quick so waskin says still a free agent by the way bring in more to the table than you actually think i just hope people know that and don't believe the bs you hear get in touch if you want to win and uh, then waskin and says when I go full time streaming, we're gonna we're gonna do it different. You know, I won't be playing next year. Never ever thought I would say that. I've been pushed out, bro. So this is where it kind of started. Adam Assault said a few days ago, there's a reason they are off London and don't have offers. They don't take their job serious and chalk scrims to play Warzone all the time and only care about how good they play. Like they're only playing for kills. They don't really care about actually winning, even though they did come top four champs. Again, there's reasons that they do not have offers. So let's look into what some of those reasons could possibly be. Kind of started up with this a couple of days ago nameless was talking about the all-star game and uh, neil guest if you guys uh, went to cwl london in 2019 you'll know who neil guest is um, but yeah you just hate eu players full stop you always made it known etc etc uh, nameless comes back with listen here you fossil neil's changes stuff to the fossil now so pretty entertaining waskin of course then comes back to nameless and says that's rude bro like you're better than that right so that kind of starts the whole thing off then to completely change tack henry g comes out with cloud nine unleash the colossus and talks about how they signed this guy alex onto their csgo team and they're releasing the contract deal on the contract length and all of this stuff and that kind of uh, sparked the topic as to whether professional Call of Duty players should also have their contracts uh, you know revealed to the public so Nameless makes a video on it should pro gamer salaries be public how much do pros make and what he mentions in this video which is pretty interesting in relation to Waskin and Scraps is that these guys supposedly are asking for too much money and that's why they aren't getting on a team. If somebody gets a crazy deal they are held to a certain standard and they have to achieve greatness otherwise it's not warranted to pay them that much and I think that that would be fantastic if it was standard across esports if every single call of duty league was going to make every single player's salary public I think that it would help a lot. You wouldn't see as many players getting overpaid and you wouldn't see some situations that we have right now. I mean, if you think about it, the rumor going on is that Weskin and Scraps, two players, have asked for a lot of money and teams don't want to pay it. And that's because they realistically have not won uh, in any of the teams that they've been on. So it's hard to justify paying them that much. So then Weskin comes back with this. Just to be clear, Nameless, me and my brother, Scraps of course, haven't spoke to one single franchise at all. So I'd love to know where me and Matty have been asking for ridiculous amounts comes from. I would do this for free, but yeah, another lie floating around. So Waskin saying that Nameless is lying about this, that none of this stuff is legit. So we definitely have to ask the question, if the fact that they're not talking to franchises or not getting spots is not because they, you know, want a lot of money, and the rumour is that they were on, like, big contracts last year on the London Royal Ravens, like upwards of 300k a year. So definitely, if you're London Royal Ravens and you're thinking, well, damn, we're in a difficult situation with the pandemic, who knows if we're going to have land events to recoup some of this investment, certainly makes sense that they would just release everyone apart from Shawnee, right? Which is what they did. They released everyone off their team apart from Shawnee. Shawnee was a substitute initially as well, so they probably had him on a much lower salaried contract, so they can certainly like keep him on for next season. And then you've got to think, okay, who else do we get? Like, let's just release everyone that's on these big contracts and re-sign them potentially for less. So if Waskin and Scraps are on these big bucks, certainly it's within London's capability to just release them into free agency and potentially re-sign them if they want, which is what we rumoured about right at the start. But the fact that they don't seem to be re-signing right is the question mark right because Waskin says he'd do this for free of course this is hyperbole but like you know he'd do it for much less contract than he's on right now for the minimum requirement which is $50,900 
I'm sure Waskin and Co would be quite happy to take around there or a little bit more than they were whatever to be on a pro league team and actually get that opportunity to compete once again at the highest level. So London, I imagine, were thinking, okay, let's just re-sign Dylan and whoever we want to get back onto the team. Rumoured to be a Shawnee, Dylan, Alex, plus one. Not sure about the plus one. We'll look about that in a second here. But yeah, if they wanted to re-sign Waskin and Scrumps for less money, they could just release them into free agency and get them back into the team. So the, the point around that they, you know, they're asking for too much money doesn't really seem to be the case and Waskin is denying that right here. So it definitely poses the question, why exactly are they not getting a spot on the team? Nameless then replies to this, Waskin called me out, here's my reply. So just share a quick clip from this one of him talking about exactly, you know, the question mark around Waskin and Scraps and why they aren't getting anywhere. Uh, I talked a little bit about Waskins and Scraps and the rumors that I've been hearing because people are trying to figure out why they have not had a squad and why they've been so outspoken about not having teams. The only thing that I can take from this is that they either asked for too much money, but he's denying it, or that they did something behind the scenes that rubbed London the wrong way and somehow other people have figured out about it and they are deciding not to go this route. So these were their results last season. Not impressive at all by any means. Apart from the fourth of the World Championship, they came second at Seattle. It wasn't a great season though for London. Like they had a decent run of things, but given the guys, that, given the amount of money that these guys were supposedly being paid, not exactly a great result, all things considered. So of course, the question is, why aren't they getting on a squad? This was some of the discussion over here. So based on what Assault was saying, basically all the Assault stuff, where he was saying that Waskin and Scraps were bailing on scrims to play these Warzone tournaments. It came from inside London, according to Waskin on a stream. He mentioned that it wasn't anyone on the team that leaked this stuff, except for Dylan Cod, implying he was the one, like, you know, talking to others behind the scenes, behind their backs. This, coupled with the rumor that Dylan is back on London with Alex and Shawnee as a team of three, would make sense why they haven't approached the Twins. Maybe Dylan was really sick of what's going on. So the question really is, is what Assault is talking about regarding, you know, these guys don't really care too much, they're skipping uh, scrims to play Warzone, this kind of stuff. Is that getting on the nerves of the London players or the London staff? And they've decided like to move forward without these guys. And I've heard a couple of things that the chemistry with Scraps and Waskin on the same squad at the same time wasn't really great at a number of times. That's not necessarily skipping scrims for Warzone or this kind of stuff, but just feels like at times the chemistry on this squad wasn't where they would have liked it to be. And that really does say, like, if you're a London management, right, and you're re-signing Shawnee, Shawnee's a great player, he's a great teammate, he's a great person to work with, and that definitely tells me the fact that they're re-signing Shawnee rather than going out for a player that might be like better in theory or better on paper, but they're going for someone who's a great teammate and a great asset to a squad. If they're going to keep a guy like Shawnee, definitely shows that they're prioritizing chemistry and prioritizing team play and prioritizing people who are easy to work with. Supposedly that wasn't the case for Scraps and Waskin, and that may be the reason why they're not going onto teams, not necessarily that they're, you know, asking for too much money. And as Waskin said in that tweet right like he's not talking to any pro teams are you know Waskin and Scraps these are some of the options right now that are on the table but a lot of these things are set in stone which team actually needs a player like Scraps I mean you can look at LA Optic and say that okay maybe this question mark needs to be filled in by a flex London of course could potentially get Scraps back but that doesn't seem like it's going to happen right like that could work great in theory right like Scraps is your kind of flex player Shawnee Main AR Dylan and Alex is your SMGs that's great on paper but doesn't seem like based on that you know thread we just looked at on the Reddit and what's been heard behind the scenes that maybe Dylan doesn't want to play with Scraps and Co next season and they want to build around Dylan this great SMG channel, potentially a generational SMG challenge. And the question is for Dylan as well this season. When we talk about this London Royal Ravens squad, when it gets confirmed, why wasn't Dylan as good this season? Because a lot of people say when he was playing Money 10s and all this kind of stuff on, on stream and playing in these like, you know, pickup matches, he was the same Dylan that he was in Black Ops 4. He was still frying, he was still dropping big numbers. But when it comes to playing in the actual professional matches, he didn't quite have that firepower. He was dropping point nines and um, you know, not what we saw from Dylan in the Black Ops 4 days. So poses the question that whether Scraps and Waskin being on this squad were, you know, hindering Dylan in that sense and uh, you know leaving him out to dry and playing for kills more than playing to win and this kind of stuff that uh, Assault is talking about in that clip maybe Dylan feels that way and he feels like playing with some of the guys that he played on reciprocity and uh, you know this team in the Black Ops 4 days might help him more than playing with the guys that were under London Royal Ravens squad earlier this season so I think there must be some degree of truth to that whether it's like absolutely 100% true or whether it's like 1% true there must be some element of that here because surely otherwise Scraps and Waskin would be top targets 
place for the Royal Ravens to come back into this team. Because as I said in the other video, they were the lifeblood of this team. They were the biggest brands on this squad in terms of players. But clearly London seem to be focusing on chemistry and team play by re-signing Shawnee. And if Dylan and co don't want to play with Scraps and Waskin for whatever reason, it seems like that's not going to be the decision that they go with going forwards. And even in terms of like a substitute positions, I think Scraps can certainly get a substitute spot somewhere. I think he's definitely you know, easily deserving of it. But do players actually want to play with him? Do they feel like he can fit into a number of different roles on the squad? Waskin certainly can't really, which is why it's really difficult being in a main assault rifle and uh, Paris Legion look like they want to stick with Dens as well. So they don't necessarily need a guy like Waskin to come in as well. Interesting situation. Intrigued to hear your thoughts down in the comment section below. Just to finish off with this really funny clip that came out yesterday from Credit Celia Lintel. It was initially clipped by a Swamp Rat, as you can see here on the Reddit, but you can do it too. Phase up is the caption for this one. Scump talking about a story with Selium back in a pre land a couple of years ago on Black Ops 4 when uh, Selium had a few words to say to Forbot. Thought this was pretty entertaining. Thanks for watching as always. Like if you guys enjoyed the video, subscribe if you are new, and I will see you next time. Have you ever heard that story of Selium? Uh, no. We were at a fucking pre land and they were screaming LG and you could snake on a certain map in Black Ops 4 and th at this one specific spot. And Formal looks over the monitors, and we weren't teaming at this point. This is when he was on LG. He looks over the monitors, right? He's like, so can you stop fucking snaking that? And he says, you can do it too, phase up. And fucking phased up through the monitor cracks, dude. <laughs> uh, that shit would have sent me through the fucking room. Because he would just do it over and over again. He really added phase up at the end of it? He said, you can do it too, phase up.